Hi everyone, this is Sarah, and I want to share with you some really powerful questions that anyone can learn in five minutes. And if you want to listen for the other five minutes, I've got another few tips for you in there as well about positive and powerful communication. So these questions are taken from simple NLP language techniques. And actually, questioning is an art form that we learn with practice. I actually run a one-day program on the art of questioning. So what I'm doing here is giving you the big picture version in five minutes, and I really hope you find it useful. So the question is, how is it possible that something we do every day, questioning, and something we've been doing since we were young children can be improved so much well? The answer lies with the question, why? Just think for a moment about the last time you did something and somebody came up and asked, why did you do that? Or they said, why are you wearing that? Or why are you like this? In any tone of voice. How did you feel? I am betting you felt a little bit defensive. And that's because the question why leads to justification and finger pointing. Effectively, we start playing the blame game. It creates defensiveness from the start. And what's more, it keeps us on the hamster wheel of the problem. It doesn't really get us to a solution. And even more unhelpful, it keeps us focused on problems. Our work or our life becomes about problem solving rather than solution finding. And let's face it, we all want to find solutions. So, how do we do it? Well, to find solutions, we want to ask process questions. Specifically, we want to ask how something happened. So what process led to this and how can we change the process so it doesn't happen again? This is called the deductive questioning process. Simply, it means that we go down and we go into more focus. We focus in on the process of how something happened. Now, the other way to find solutions is to expand our perspective so that we literally fly high above the situation and we see much more of what happened before, what happened afterwards, what else is going on simultaneously. And this expands our view and helps us to minimize the problem mindset. So let's get going, are you ready? Let's start with focusing in. You're gonna be so familiar with all of these questions, okay? How, who, when, where, and what. I'm asking you specifically to try and release why from your vocabulary. There really is no use or purpose for using it. And by the way, getting it out of your vocabulary is not as easy as you may think because you'll be stunned when you bring it into your awareness how much you use this question word. So we're looking at the four W's plus how. Deductive questioning, getting more details. Who, when, what, where, how. Let's look at some examples. For example, who told you to do this? Who specifically asked us to do that? When did they ask us? When did we find out we couldn't meet the deadline? What did we do about it? What made us choose that specific approach? What else contributed to the outcome? What could we have done differently? What do we achieve by doing things this way? Where in the process do you think we could have changed the outcome? How could we improve this next time? How would you prefer to do it next time? How can we change our approach? So notice that no matter what tone of voice you deliver these questions in, what they're doing is they're recovering process and there's actually no requirement to respond with justification. It's literally going, okay, what we're doing here is a process. Let's change the process. Let's find a better way to do it. So simple, right? Practice doing it. And put a note in your pocket and just practice doing it. You'll notice a difference immediately.
Okay, let us look at the next route, which is expanding perspectives. What we're really doing is going up and looking at what's important about this situation. So, we're looking at a frame for new possibilities. We're also identifying people's values around a situation. And in the same way that a sales team might want to ask a client what's important to you about this product or this order or our service so that actually they can meet the client's top three values. When we elicit values from everyone around us and what's important within very specific contexts, we understand that everyone has good intentions and it's just behavior that may translate differently. And let's face it, we can change behavior quite easily. Changing intentions takes a lot more effort. What was your main driver for doing it that way? What's important to you about this? What do you value most here? Time, accuracy, or something else? What's this all about? What's the purpose of this for you? What's the highest intention here? This gives us the massive kind of rise up to the top so we can look down to understand the purpose of what we're doing. What's the intention? What is the big picture here? The other real benefit of using this questioning approach is that sometimes down in the details, we over-focus on problems and we think everything can be a problem. When we actually get up to the big picture and we take into account everything, we notice that what we used to think was a problem is actually quite insignificant. Okay, good. So that is my main how to learn to communicate better in five minutes. If you want to learn some more tips, keep watching. Sometimes we find ourselves in a complete communication deadlock when the other person just can't appreciate what we're thinking or we just can't appreciate what the other person is thinking. So what do we do about that? Well, we try and work together or we try and work towards one another in a really collaborative way. It's perfectly reasonable to be totally honest and say, hey, I just don't get this. What do you think you can see that I can't see? What am I missing? What am I not taking into account? Or you can say, I'm trying to work out what I'm seeing that you're not seeing here. What do you think it could be? Again, this is really collaborative and it feels like you're actually trying to find solutions together. When you want to introduce an idea, you can say, hey, I've been thinking about it from this perspective. Have you considered this or have you considered that particular aspect? So either way, when you start on this route forward, you break out of communication deadlock, you expand the energy and you can move forward. Good, okay. Let's talk about the what if question set. As we all know, to wonder is to create and we all love creative solutions. This is a really useful technique when you're trying to elevate your thinking and look at strategy for a business or when you're trying to get up to the big picture and you know really kind of break out of your boundaries. So, the questions that we ask, and please resist thinking about these logically, because if you look at them logically, you're gonna say, well, this is the same question asked in four different ways, and you'd be absolutely right. And your next logical conclusion might be, well, how on earth could this work? So my advice to you is resist your logic, write these four questions down on a piece of paper, Practice them on yourself or with other people preferably because it works much better when you've got two parties involved. Take it to your next meeting. Test it out. And let me tell you that the magic happens somewhere between the third and the fourth question. Test it, use it confidently and see what happens. I think you'll be excited. Okay, I just want to talk about something that creates a real block in communication. That is <laughs> the dangers of assuming things. So we all make assumptions. We can't help it. Our brains are designed to categorize information to make us operate faster. However, we all know that assumptions can be the mother of all, let's call it disaster. So we can take steps to break free of them. And this is something we want to consciously work on 
especially if we have been working with the same people for a really long time. Often, assumption happens when we've been in a 10 year, 10 or longer year relationship, when we've worked with the same people for a long time, or when we're really familiar with a situation and we think we just know. Every moment, to some degree or another, is unique, and we forget that. So I am reminding you, because this is a really powerful way to inject energy into communication in a company or in a relationship where the communication is a little bit dead or stagnant. Practice asking questions. I gave you all the questions at the beginning of this session. Just get into the habit of asking, even if you think you know, because I truly believe if you practice asking questions when you think you already know for one week, you will be stunned at how much you don't know. You may think you know what your partner is thinking or feeling about an issue, and you may discover that you really don't. So test this, practice asking questions. It may feel a bit weird for people that know you really well or, or that you know really well, because they'll think, well, hang on a minute, what's the purpose of all this questioning all of a sudden? Explain to them, just say, look, I'm really trying to refresh my ideas, I'm trying to refresh my perspective. And I'm trying to forge more intimate communication. I really want to know what you're thinking and what your perspective is, because sometimes we all assume. Force yourself to ask questions and clarify, even when you think you already know, and just see what happens after one week. And the final thing that I want to say in this video is that we is the language of unity. It is such a powerful shift that you can make within teams and in relationships when you move from you or I language to we language. What do we think about this? What do we want to achieve? What are we doing today? It's so simple and it's so powerful and I'm reminding you to forge this in your memory because it's super powerful and I guarantee again, if you take this into work for a week, you're going to see a difference. So have fun, go out, test it, empower your communication and let me know how you get on.